Is it all right if I talk, play, and then talk? It's all about art, man. It's all about the art, man. <laughs> it's obviously not about the home decor. Uh, wish there was more coffee. So uh, Bach, he loved this particular set of harmonies that makes up the Goldberg Rations, and and he actually wrote fourteen canons on just the first eight bass notes of the Goldbergs. Um, so he was obviously obsessed. And the first eight bass notes are not complicated. In fact, they're as simple as can be. And Handel wrote a whole set of variations on these same eight bass notes. You might say a slightly boring set of variations. And you might say that Bach was trying to one-up Handel in this way. So in those canons, this set of notes keeps repeating itself over and over again as a kind of a sonata. And Probably Bach decided that that was too repetitive and too limited uh, something to construct such a vast, massive, fantastic piece out of. So he does four sets of eight. So he expands the story. So we start with the four, eight again. And then we do a very similar. The second half of the story, the next 16. <laughs> Playing it by itself is very satisfying and pleasant. And then, and those are all, all those basins have to do with harmonies, of course. and it's harmonized. What he, what he does is then kind of telescope out, so those harmonies progress very slowly. So you don't hear clearly, just very quickly, but it expands one per bar. And so it's a wonderful leisureliness. That is how Bach composes out a kind of fundamental piece of musical grammar, something like a piece of DNA that's really basic and kind of a, almost a little bit too simple. And then you just sort of add, you flesh out the bones of the skeleton and you get this ridiculously beautiful melody. And then what's fascinating also is the way that the bass line begins to, uh, how do we put this? Uh, affect or infect or interpenetrate. I don't want to get an innuendo about that, but that actually the bass is about descending four notes, right? And all of the first four phrases end with wonderful 
five note descents. One, two, three, four, five. The second phrase. Same. One, two, three, four. Five notes down again. Five notes down. And now the bass goes up four notes. This one has four note descent. This one, five note. Then again, now three times in a row so that you don't miss it. One, two, three, four, five. Again, now the five notes down. And now, wonderfully, five notes down, but skipping up around the octave. It's kind of like a, you know, the bass, as I said, infecting the, the melody in a way that's very subtle and kind of not hammered over your head or whatever, but astounding. And, and it's sort of, well, it comes to a climax at the end of the theme. Um, there's an amazing quote of Tovey about the end of this theme, because the theme comes back, um, as beautiful as it is, the aria returns in its original shape with a strangely new and yet familiar effect. Its numberless trills and grace notes no longer seem curious and posing, and its harmonies are now revealed as what they really are. The support of the whole mighty design, not merely the base of a delicately ornamented saraband. As the aria gathers up its rhythms into the broad passage of steady semiquavers, 16th notes, with which it ends, we realize that beneath its slight exterior, the great qualities of the variations lie concealed but living and awake. And in that moment, we realize the work is over. And that's another, it's a kind of a compositional detail, but Bach does this several times in the piece that, you know, most of the rhythm of the beginning is just these quarter notes and dotted rhythms. But then suddenly, as if he wants to conceal some sort of symmetry at the end, he wants to do something else. The right hand takes off into this continuous not never stopping and just endlessly still not stopping still not stopping and similarly the bass begins to chain itself together. With the fifths that I was talking about earlier. Right? Both of those amazing things are happening at the same time. And they're both kind of about elision and connecting and drawing everything together. And that happens in a very large scale. It happens in many of the variations, the same gesture of sort of sweeping everything together at the end. But it also happens because the last five variations are kind of weirder and of a, of a more ecstatic kind of character than all the others. So then in the large scale of the piece too, before he draws it all together with the theme, he does this wonderful gesture of expanding and connecting and, and doing something new 
that had never been expected at the same time. <laughs>